42. So this coming week sees the 30th anniversary of what, at the time, was the longest ever raid carried out by the RAF. It was the opening operation in the campaign to retake the Falkland Islands. Hundreds of personnel were involved in the effort to help Vulcan bombers fly an 8,000-mile round trip to Port Stanley. The last operational Vulcan is based in Doncaster, and Danny Savage has been there to see it and meet some of the people who were involved in the historic mission. A Vulcan bomber, a relic of the Cold War, and a plane that 30 years ago was at the end of its life. But when the Falklands War broke out, the RAF turned to the men who flew these Delta Wing giants and asked them to carry out the longest range bomber raid that had ever been mounted. It was called Operation Black Buck. Black Buck was uh, a mission uh, to get a, a bomb on the runway at uh, Stanley, uh, which is precisely what we did. And it, the, because uh, Admiral Woodward reckoned his first task uh, when we started to retake the islands was to put that airfield out of business. The plan involved flying non-stop from Ascension Island in the mid-Atlantic to the Falklands, bomb the airport at Port Stanley and fly back again a massive round trip of nearly 8,000 miles over the sea. And to make it even more difficult, there weren't any maps of the route. So the RAF had never been down there, so we didn't know where it was. But we had no maps of anywhere in the South Atlantic because we never thought it was a threat. So we got some Mercator charts, which are gratical type charts of the North Atlantic, turned them upside down, and what was 57 North became 57 South. So we just plotted where the Falklands were, which actually I think was somewhere in Greenland when you looked at the, what was on the chart, and did it that way. And it worked. And on top of that, the Vulcan wasn't built for such a trip. It was designed to launch a nuclear attack on Russia from the UK. It couldn't carry anywhere near enough fuel for the planned mission, so it had to be refitted for air-to-air -air refueling, and then the crews had to learn how to do it. The big thing about the Vulcan is the instead of the probe being in the sight of the pilot, somewhere up here, um, it was actually right in the middle of the nose, sort of beyond our feet. So it was, you couldn't actually see the probe as you were approaching the basket. So in the run-up to the mission, Vulcan bombers and the Victor tankers needed to refuel them gathered on Ascension Island, quickly turning the remote outpost into one of the busiest airfields in the world. About a dozen tanker aircraft were needed to get one Vulcan through the mission. Even the tankers needed tankers. Martin Withers' Vulcan refueled seven times on the way south, but they hit their target leaving a huge crater in the runway at Port Stanley. Ours was the first attack of the conflict to liberate the islands, and uh, you, we, the lights were on on the airfield. Uh, they were obviously weren't expecting us, and uh, so we, it just seemed really a strange thing to be doing, ra not rather than a particularly scary thing to be doing. But they had to get back, and that meant finding one last tanker as their fuel levels dropped to near zero. And there he was with his hose uh, streamed out of the back on a lovely blue sky, first refueling we'd done in the daylight, and it was, oh, the most beautiful sight in the world. More than 15 hours after taking off, the Vulcan touched back down at Ascension, to the relief of all involved. But the raid should not be viewed in isolation. Its success handed a key advantage to the British. It made Argentina think that these Vulcan bombers could reach their mainland, so they had to rearrange their air defences to cover a much wider area. And it also delivered a statement of intent that the British were deadly serious about retaking the Falkland Islands. And it was a mission that earned this unique-looking plane a place in history. Danny Savage, BBC News, Doncaster.